Good evening, everyone. This is the meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Today is January 26, 2021. Is there a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The first order of business, gentlemen, is old business, which is MSBA approval of con contract documents. Um, Ms. Hebert and Ms. Leonard have put together a, a batch of documents. I know it was a lot to go through. Uh, all I do is go to the bottom line number that was voted at town meeting in the amount of $2,570,759. Um, and that number is still the same. It has not changed. Uh, Ms. Hebert, do you have any comments on this? I know town council's reviewed. Yep, town council reviewed. They're um, all set with it. It's pretty standard. Um, this is kind of an, another formality. Um, again, this was voted at town meeting and they've put all the documents together thereafter and now they're looking for it to be signed. And once this signed, once this signed, Ms. Hebert, it would go out for bid because I tried to contact Steve, the OPM for the project dictated by MSBA, not the town of Akushnet, but I haven't heard back from them. Yep. Yep. So he, he is just waiting for this to be signed. And um, I believe they have... Um, an update too that needs to be signed for their contract. Um, I know the school has some stuff to sign for them as well, but uh, yeah, once that's all together, they'll be going out to bid and um, looking to do the project this summer. All right. Is there a motion to approve the MSBA approval of contract documents as presented? Motion to approve. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next up on the agenda on the old business is a project manager discussion. Um, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago in trying to get somebody in there to uh, help out with some of the grants um, funding and grant opportunities that we have, gentlemen. Um, well, missed opportunities that we've had. Uh, Mr. Merritt has sent over a, a letter I'm um, saying on other notes, which will be concerns of the boards reviewing this evening our solar panels for Morse's Lane Park Drive and the relationship with the already approved Deep Brook subdivision, which sits between them both for the town's benefit and that of the developers. I would ask two things. The board requests the aid of part-time health agent, agent Pat Hannon to act in a supervisory capacity and the board seek peer review. The permitting fee for these projects could help pay uh, Mr. Hanning for his additional time I know that there's some money left over in the so-called special projects manager um, budget for the remaining half of the year. Um, I think it would uh, be a good idea that we get somebody on board. I know Ms. Hebert's been asking um, for some help um, trying to do to secure the grants and things of that nature that we've fallen behind on or just haven't plain outright gone after. And I know Mr. Hannon's got some experience from his town being on FinCom um, going after these grants and he's knowledgeable of grant availability and things of that nature. So I think it would, uh, it would benefit the board for now um, to at least through the calendar year to absorb up what's remaining in that budget line item um, and allow Mr. Hanning the opportunity um, in the town, quite honestly, um, to go after some of these grants and uh, help out, um, as Mr. Merritt said, with some of these projects. And I think he's, when he talks about that more slain solar project, I think it's uh, White's solar project up the hill. And then you have Deep Brook that's in the bottom of the valley over there. And I know there's a lot of concerns with uh, wetlands and, and water runoff and storm water and things of that nature. Um, so I think it would be a, a big helping hand to Mr. Merritt, uh, Ms. Hebert, and I believe the board and the residents of Akushnet, if we could get them in there and start helping out with some of this stuff and the boards we're going to be discussing other things with uh, a position itself um, for the next coming calendar year as well as um, Mr. Wona you talked about a full-time planner in the future um, and doing something there as well so um, we'll be more than happy to have those discussions moving forward. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, um, at the last meeting I asked that we hold off on this just because I wanted to get some additional information I um, had a chance to talk with Pat, had a chance to talk with Julie, and I'm comfortable with moving forward with him on an interim basis. Um, I do one thing I would ask, though, um, just so we can get a feel for the job, um, is, is Julie 
uh, to update us on what he's being assigned and what he's working on. Um, I explained that to Pat. I, I think, you know, with uh, Henry being in that position for so long, you know, we all kind of just assume, you know, things got done, right? And we weren't really uh, micromanaging per se, but I think in this case, this way we can make an educated decision on where we want to go with that position or those monies, you know, and I think yeah, um, I agree. I'm all for having as many, uh, I'm, I'm all for personnel. I'm all for putting together a team. I, th I think there are times when as a, not only in my previous stint on the board, but I see it now, uh, there's a lot going on and I would hate to miss out on opportunities because we don't have the, the, the personnel in place. So I'd be first to make a motion to appoint Mr. Hannon on an interim basis as the uh, special projects manager to uh, give us some support. Well, I, can sec I, I can second that motion. And my only comments are, are we talking fiscal year? Because well, what, how long of a term are we looking at for Mr. Hannon at this point in time? Well, I, again, I said it before, and I'll, and I'll say it again, Mr. DeRoche, there's, there's money left over in that budget line item, um, six months perhaps in that budget line item. So that's all that we, we, we would really be doing unless something came up that was like really dramatic. And Mr. Merritt's talking about um, some money in solar project permitting fees and things of that nature. I think Mr. Wona hit it spot on. We'll figure it out. We'll see. We'll get an update. Perhaps we can even write a little job description um, to go along with it for now. And then the board, when we discuss our budget, because that's where that money is, um, we can discuss it um, amongst a lot of other things that will be taken up for discussion. But um, Selectman Wona has had some good ideas in the past, and he's been talking about some different things that he's looking forward to doing. So I think that's all kind of goes hand in foot, and we'll figure it out and figure out the best direction as we move forward for the town um, to capitalize on as much as we can possibly capitalize on I think that's the best route to go. Very good. Very good. And so there's a motion. There's a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen. Ms. Hebert, can you uh, contact Mr. Hannon and let him know? I will. Get on the ball. Um, contracts for clerical union waging classification. Gentlemen, this is something that's been uh, out there for quite some time. Um, <clears throat> It was actually, I believe it was in the ASME clerical contract sometime a couple of years ago with Mr. Noble buried that in there and former selectman <clears throat> added in there. And I don't necessarily know if I voted on that contract. So it is what it is at this point. But we, we did the department heads, the non-union ones. These are the union ones now. Um, I've looked over this um, pretty quickly. Ms. Hebert assured me that this individual consultant firm is um, going to do a much better job than the end result we got out of the last wage and classification. Um, I think there's a lot of people out there that know how I spoke on that big mess that we had and how it wasn't really done alongside and coherent with our department heads. And there was a lot of mistakes that were made there. And I'm confident with Ms. Hebert and myself as chairman of the board that we'll be um, moving forward and getting a much better document in place this go around. Um, the only thing that I would ask Ms. Hebert to do, and I know that you had some schedule, payment schedule. Um, Mr. Jacobs, I believe his last name is Mr. Jacobs. Um, mm -hmm. He put in a, a payment schedule. I don't know, oh, it's right here. So the first thing gentlemen on, on the project task is orientation, right? So I think Ms. Hebert, the first thing I would ask Mr. Jacobs and, and his firm to do is, come into our next selectman's meeting or the one after that, if he, if he needs more prep time, whatever, and have a quick discussion with the board. Um, so we can tell him what we're really looking for and what we really want to get out of the document um, versus the, I'll just say it, the crap we got last time. I think he, he would actually really appreciate that. Um, in all the discussions I've had with him, he is very, um, willing and open. He he wants to have the Board of Selectmen be an active participant in the classification. So um, I know he will look forward to doing that. Yeah, great. So if you can just, um, gentlemen, you got any comments on, on uh, the contract for this clerical union wage classification? I don't. No. Pretty straightforward. Yep. yep. Is there a motion to approve the contract for the clerical union wage classification with VIJ Consultant Services. So moved. 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The next one on there is uh, Comcast permit approval. Julie, I, I spoke with some of the cable people, the committee people, and nobody's ever heard or seen anything of this. And it is a substantial document. And we do have that cable committee that was specifically appointed for this purpose. Um, as part of that process, I'd like to keep that intact. And if we could forward this off to those cable um, committee members, let them review the document and we'll take it up in a future meeting to make sure that everything's copacetic with them. I can do that. Thank you, Ms. Hebert. And a uh, new business, 148 Peckham Road Appeal discussion. Gentlemen, I'm striking that from the agenda um, for now. Okay. All right. Okay. So the only thing we have left uh, as far as anybody coming in is Mr. Menard. He's on the screen to discuss the cost to fix the DPW loader. Welcome, Mr. Menard. How are we doing? Good, We're Dan. Doing? How are you tonight? Good. You guys? Um, did you guys get the um, the paperwork there from Schmidt for the repairs? I believe you guys got all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dan, I, I, I've got... I, I received something, I think it was last Friday before Ms. Hebert was leaving. She gave me something, but just, just go through the list and speak to the board. And I've, I've reviewed all the documents that he has. So I'm pretty familiar with, with, uh, with what you got here. So if you want to okay. talk to you him. You want to go the sheet by sheet, Kevin? I'll tell you, explain what, what he went through. That what happened is I had the guy down from Schmidt come down, um, look at a, a loader and, you know, see what it needed, you know, to, to you know, you know, get it up to up to where it should be. So um, the first page was the um, rims. It's not tires, so it's because the rims are rusted. Again, um, you know, for being in the salt shed for 18 years, 19 years going on now, um, the rims are rusted. And actually we have a lot of hard time keeping them aired up because there's a rubber O-ring in there and they're pitted and they want to keep leaking. So the first thing was getting the rims replace taking our tires that are on there now and just um, putting the tires on the new rims. So that's the first one, which was 11,090. Dean, can I ask you a quick question? Yep. How's the rubber on our loader? The rubber is good. All so right. this is not for the rotor. That That is for the um, taking our tires and putting them on these rims. Yeah, I know. I seen the rim repair. I actually looked yep. up some of these part numbers and seen what it was all about. Yeah. And after doing that, I was just curious if you know, we were dismounting the tires at that point. There's really no labor because you're dismounting and mounting again anyway. So I just figured Correct. if we if we needed rubber on that. Well, you know. rubbers, you know, some of them now, like depends what brand you get, could be up to 2000 a tire. So, right. I mean, our rubber is really good. So we try okay. to keep up with that every few years. Even we do two at a time, two one year, two the next. So the rubber is definitely really good. So, um, excuse me, question please. Uh, just where it says wheel, that's not the rubber tire, that's the rims you're talking about. Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. Yep. So, um, okay, I'm just trying to see the next page. Um, the next page is the bucket pins and bushings. So them are getting worn out. And what happens with that, once they get to a certain point, you have to line bore them and then they put um, oversized bushings and stuff and it gets really costly. So this is something to prevent before that happens. So, they, you know, they're worn, but they're not total junk. You know, like I said, our loader is in still good shape, but, you know, we've got to keep kind of do the pins and bushings. And actually the next couple pages that are there, it's hey, all Don, really... Hey, hey huh? Dan, can I, can I just ask you a question while you're on the... It says uh, remove bucket. Yep. And it says install new bucket. Are we, okay, are we, are we yes, really? Bu are I'm going to put really a bucket as well. Correct. The bucket he put in there as well, too. Yeah. Okay. Correct. So with okay. the bucket, the new bushings and the uh, pins, pins and okay. bushings. Okay. And the seals, wash, and stuff like that on there. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other ones, the other pages are ba basically us, uh, the um, steering pistons. And it's um, rebuilding because we got some pistons that are leaking. So it's like re um, bushing the pistons and uh, new seals in them. So mm -hmm. that's for the steering pistons and the lift pistons mm -hmm. on the next two things. If you see the hydraulic, 
cylinder kit. So that's to rebuild the cylinders. So what they do is take the um, cylinder apart, they repack it with bushings. And again, that's all the stuff you need special tools for to take the nut off of the back to get the bushings on, on the cylinders. So that's what that, that's, a, that's that part of it on that page. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the next page was the steering cylinder pins and bushings because it's an articulate loader. These are the, these are the pistons in the center of the machine that turn it and then we're, then we're getting worn. So that that's the pins and bushings on that as well. So this is kind of, this, this list here is kind of general wear and tear of using the machine. Correct. It's 18 years old. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's, you know, for being used 18 years, right. um, he's actually, he was real happy because the center pin bushings were actually really good. And that's what usually goes on these machines. And he, he was real happy with that. He said, so it's actually <laughs> a cheaper cost. Cool. Um, the next one was the transmission, which was an expensive one, but he's going to really, without bringing it to their shop, they can't fully tell me because you're going to put pressure gauges and stuff on that. And I'll let you know if it's really worn out inside or not, because right now it's giving some humming noises. So we we're concerned with it. So until that, I mean, it's 32,000 to do that transmission to rebush it and stuff, but it might not need it until we get in there. So that's one thing that had to be in their shop to, to verify that. So, so it, kind of instead of refurb I mean, it would be like uh, like a refurbish instead of a replacement. Or Correct. A Correct. Okay. So they would, they'll take it out. They'll do all the all the um, clutches in there and all the the bushings and everything in there, and then re reassemble and put it back into the machine. Okay. And are we are we are we talking a rebuilt transmission? Because we talked Correct. about that on town meeting floor, right? And we talked about the tranny whining and making noise and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Is that? Are we definitely getting that done? Or are we waiting for it to get to the repair shop for them to figure out what that whining noise is? Correct. That's they're gonna they're gonna put you gonna the only way to do that, Kevin, is to put um, pressure gauges on it and stuff, and they'll tell yep. you what the pressure is, and they'll know right then and there what it's supposed to be and if it yep. needs it at, at that point. So yep. again, without, but I'm assuming where it's 18, 19 year old, it's probably gonna be low pressures, and so I'm kind of you know assuming that it's gonna need it, Kevin. I'm thinking. I'm thinking that while it's there, we know yeah. we know we know that the trannies do go. I mean, yeah, we'll have the if it's like said, where it's got that many out, where it has that many hours on it. Um, I'm assuming it's going to need it. Yeah. Um, the only one now, uh, what you guys have and what I have, because I changed this up since a little since I've talked with um, you and I gave this to you guys was the cab. He has the cab replacing the cab on that because um, it has some rust on the cab. So. That's something I can do in house, so I, I can weld on that and and fix the cab. And plus, he couldn't even get a new one anyways. It was a used cab he was quoting us for. So in, uh, instead of doing the cab, I kind of went with uh, brakes, getting brakes done instead of that, because the brakes are inside them axles, and that's something that we wouldn't be able to do in house. That's something they got to kind of handle themselves. So um, my quote, the finished quote, is like a thousand dollars less. Than yours, mine's um, yours was eighty four. If you go to last page, mm -hmm. total, and mine comes out to eighty three oh sixty six. Because I just changed the cab for having um, some universals done and the brakes done on the machine instead of the cab. So but it Dan, come out a little cheaper. But, Dan, but I think it's yep. You you're talking about eighty three thousand. I thought that was the bottom line number that you have here. That one I th that I quote. That Eighty-four thousand, but if we're not doing the cab, don't we take away the twenty grand? No, no, eleven. Wasn't it? Wasn't eleven thousand on a on that one? Uh, I thought for the cab. It says nineteen thousand five hundred. Okay, I don't get that one. Hold on, let me get my on oh, the cab. One. Yeah, it says oh. replace complete cab with used cab assembly. Remove skirts, evacuate AC, and all of that. You yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. So if that was twenty thousand bucks and the total was call it eighty five thousand bucks, are we down to sixty five thousand bucks plus whatever the brakes are? You're correct. Correct. So what, are, what are you What are you talking about? A final number? The brakes I got is fifteen two twenty, and then for them universals and stuff, he's got another twenty nine hundred, and that was some hoses. So um, the replacement back, hose. So, so I got a total of eighty three thousand sixty six dollars. Okay. So we're back to the we're back to the eighty. Oh. Call it yep. eighty five grand. Yes. And the and the reason why I'm calling it eighty five grand is because I read through the little footnotes that you got in here that they put together for you. And I was in the business of repairs, um, not heavy equipment, but 
trucks and autos and things of that nature. And it says something about if the pins are frozen, we'll have to take the torches out and that's an additional cost. And I'm, I'm familiar with that process, right? So in other words, if the bolts and nuts are seized up, they're gonna take torches to it, heat them up, blast them off, and they'll have to replace those. Correct. So you might wanna, we just kind of give a round up number, um, 85 grand to re, revamp our loader versus I think it was 275 on town meeting floor. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, gentlemen. Now will this have to go back to town meeting to get approval for the money? Will this be written as an article and then have to go to town meeting floor? Unless you have 85 grand you want to give to Mr. Menard to repair it, yeah. <laughs> Well, don't we have, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the, the equipment. I don't have the piggy bank back there. <laughs> no, no. Um, unfortunately, no. And, and going for like a reserve fund transfer, you might be thinking, Mr. DeRoche, is um, that little piggy bank, I would not recommend. There's only like 150 thousand in reserve fund transfer budget um and you'd be basically wiping out over 50 percent of that budget I, I would not recommend that um at all so i think it would have to go back to town meeting um in replace of in lieu of the 275 that was rejected by town meeting for a new loader you're saving about one hundred and ninety thousand dollars this way mm -hmm. yep no i i concur with the assessment so select manwona any comments yeah, I mean, I don't know. I was for investing in a new loader at town meeting, and that's how I feel now. I mean, this thing is eight, what 20 years old. We say 18, 20 years old. I mean, I think we got to make decisions now. They're going to set us up for the long haul. Um, and if you apportion 275,000 over 20 years, I know I realize it's you got to look at it that way. Um, I, I'm not necessarily in favor of putting good money into into bad. Um, and I'm in the camp of, you know, a new loader, but that's, uh, you know, we got to take that, make that case, consider that as a board and ultimately make that case to town meeting. And if, I don't know, we'll have to, time will tell how that plays out, but I'm, I'm in the camp of a new loader. Yeah. Selectman won't, I, um, I appreciate that thought. Um, I spoke favorably about the loader, um, on town meeting floor and it, it is what it is at that point, the people have spoken, right? So I think, I think the best game plan for the Board of Selectmen um, to do this would, if it's gonna be in a so form article, right? That's the only way for us to do it is maybe we prepare an article for the new loader again, let that go on the warrant first. If it's denied, we have an article on the warrant from there for the 85,000 for the repair um, as a fallback plan, right? If, if, if the town meeting members decide a new load is the way to go, we table the second article for the repair of this loader um, and off she hops. Dan, what, what, what are your thoughts? Because I know that we talked about keeping the loader, but only using the older one in the yard. But, um, you know, I, I look at 85,000 bucks and I'll say this. I've done some research over that time because um, I'm in that camp with Selectman Wona and I've looked at it over over on the internet and I've looked up this machine, seeing how I had the year um, and model number. And I looked it up and used machines that aren't too healthy looking of 30 to 50,000 bucks within the 1998 to 2003, right? Um, I, I, would, I, I would advise maybe you have a, a whole closet of people out there in the industry. Maybe you could start examining um, you know, used equipment and maybe there's something out there that's a real cherry out there that maybe we can get our hands on for, for a decent amount of bucks and, you know, we'll go that route. And instead of repairing this one, what I'm saying, Dan, is instead of spending 85 grand on a repair job, if we can find something that might be out there um, in the used land or somebody that you happen to know that's looking to trade in, whatever the case may be, um, pursue that avenue. We have time before town meeting, but right now I think that the game plan would be is, We'll put it on as an article. We'll put a secondary article on there for the repairs of this um, machine and move on. But I know that the discussion was we wanted to keep both machines. Um, however, if um, as Mr. Wona has stated, if that's the case and we're only using one in the yard, maybe we don't have to go through all the repairs, right? 
Yeah, that's correct. Because um, really the one that's using in the yard would be just for recycling. So it would just be on a Friday and Saturday. Um, and again, you know, even new ones break down. I think somebody brought that up at the town meeting, which was even a new one could break. So it is nice having a backup one. That's that was my thoughts in the in keeping it and for what they're going to give you for it is usually not worth it. So I know it needs that much money. But the reason I bring it to you guys is just because I don't want to be caught and this thing break down on us in a storm or something. And, you know, so where the town denied that, I figured the best bet is to get ours up to where, where at least it's going to be the best we can do. And this ain't, even this quote, that's nothing to do with no engine work or stuff like that. And usually yeah. 10 to 15,000 hours, them, them engines need rebuilding. Most around 10,000 is, is when you rebuild an engine. And again, I know Mr. Fedette was one of the uh, owners on there and he was kind of saying, this is a totally different machine than, than, uh, you know, the one that works in the pit. They usually don't work all winter. They don't drive over the streets, cross town, and they're not in a salt barn sitting there every winter for 20 years. So that's what rots them out, rots out the rims. It's a different different animal than what they're dealing with as in a construction pit sitting there. So yep. I just wanted yep. to let that be aware to you. Uh, take, take, take a look out there. We have some time between now and town meeting and preparation of articles, Dan. So <clears throat> if you can reach out to some of these guys, these, these suppliers, even Schmidt, they take in new equipment, used equipment, I mean, whatever. Anybody and everybody you can talk to and just see what's out there. I mean, I, I know when I was in the business, that's what you do. You know, you just put your feelers out there. And if you're not in a rush for something, you're usually pretty successful finding, you know, that nice piece of used equipment. So um, if you're in a rush for it, you're in trouble, right? So if we get the feelers out there now, maybe we can come up with something and we'll have that dialogue again with the board. Well, I'd, I'd just like to say that I'm glad we have some options. We still have to assess our finances for the upcoming fiscal year. And um, I think as the time draws nearer, we'll have a better understanding of what we have to spend and, um, and go from there. Yep, I agree. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dan. Okay, guys, have a good night. Thank you, Dan. Town Administrator's report. Uh, I have nothing for tonight. <clears throat> Gentlemen, I, I, I would like to just bring something up. Selectman Wonar brought it up and I thought it was a valid point last time to get into this budget discussions with the uh, available funds and things of that nature. Um, I'm going to jump on that ban bandwagon. I know Ms. Hebert's had some things to do and there's nothing more important I think at this point is to get our FinCom up and running um, in a proven budget. So I, 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 will, I will say this. I think maybe Ms. Hebert, the best plan and the board will have that conversation after I make this comment is, I think that if we have any departments that can come in level funded, perhaps you give the board of selectmen a list of those budgets and if and we say, yeah, we're okay with them, um, with a level funded budget from last year and they don't have no reason for increases and things of that nature, the board of selectmen can just approve them and let them rip to FinCom and they can get started in their budget process if they ain't going to have no impact on increased costs. Gentlemen, what do you think about that? And Mr. Chairman, I think that's a great baseline, but I th in totality, we don't know if we have to be in a situation where we might have to cut. You know, So if somebody's looking at level funding, um, without knowing the big picture, yeah. we don't know... I would just be hesitant to make decisions without knowing the whole, the overall picture. I was, I'm, I'm really, and I, and I, I apologize, Selectman Wona, for skewing that um, pitch, but um, I wouldn't expect somebody like police, fire, DP, our bigger budgets. I'm talking conservation, maybe council on aging, library, if there's, if they're fine with their budget and they go to FinCom and then we find out at a, a meeting and say, hey, you know, we're, we're, we have revenue shortfalls because of the increase in XYZ's budgets. You know, mm -hmm. we need to make some changes. Those budgets have been stripped down so bad. There's only so much, there's only so much we'll squeeze out of them. And uh, I just don't want to hold up FinCom. I think FinCom can get some of the little ones out of the way. I would, I'm not proposing by any stretch of the imagination, any of our enterprise funds um, and all public safety divisions. Okay, fair enough. Has it, uh, Julie, has there been any um, uh, word from the state about 
kind of money's coming in next year or is there, you know, I know they just passed their budget at the end of the year for this year. So they're already six months behind. And, um, you know, if, the, if you had received or anybody here on the board has received any indication of what we could expect. No, not yet. Not, not anything meaningful. Um, I think they're still looking at what they have and um, trying to anticipate what next year will look like. I think obviously the further out we go, we're going to get more, more accurate numbers, um, especially depending on how the vaccine turns out. And, um, you know, that obviously impacts the economy. So right now, I have nothing. And um, when I look at other towns and everyone's, you know, kind of talking and sharing, most towns are looking at keeping, if they, if they cut last year, they're looking at keeping the same cut um, or uh, at least level funding. No one's looking at any kind of increase from the state. Um, most I think are looking at a decrease. And I think for us where we decreased 5% for FY20 and um, for FY21 and we um, we're level funded. The money that we are making up from the state um, will be a nice buffer for us. And I think if we look at doing another, keeping it level funded with the 5% cut again next year, again, depending on what the state comes out with, um, we'll be able to use the buffer from this year with that. And I think we'll be in a really good situation. Um, but no, not, you know, to answer your question, nothing definitive yet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the, the problem, the problem, Selectman DeRoche, with that is um, <clears throat> only some of our budgets were cut and to make up some of that. And we never achieved the full $410,000 cut. So, I mean, we got to look at things in realistic terms. I think that, uh, you know, that's what we were heading to. And that was the theory behind it. But we never really met that challenge on um, just because some departments didn't have that cut to give. Um, right. And I'll, and I'll say this, um, DPW was hacked up pretty good um, in trying to achieve that cut. Um, so I'm anticipating um, some dialogue with DPW about getting that budget back to where it needs to be. Cutting our infrastructure, I don't believe is prudent for the well-being of the community. So we're going to have probably some hard choices and decisions to make. Um, and that's what we'll do come by the budget process. But we'll figure it out. Ms. Hebert, you put together some numbers um, together for what we have for this year. Um, I think we'll worry about next year funding source. We did that practice last year. We can't keep playing from behind. Um, I think we need to address the concerns that we have this year and then next year will be another year that we'll have to figure it out then But and where we're gonna go. But for right now, we need to figure out what we have, what the needs are for the community as a whole and then try to make those appropriations fit within everybody's budgets. Great. And I will add, you know, we, we still have fixed costs um, that are increasing um, health insurance right now. We're waiting on numbers. Um, we usually get them in February, near the end of February, but um, across the board, I think COVID did a number on um, health insurance as well, um, having all the costs covered for free by health insurance companies. Um, most towns are looking at like a five to 7% increase. Uh, we don't know where we'll fall on that. We've had generally good numbers in the past. Um, I'll mention, I, I think we mentioned it at our last meeting, Old Colony. Um, we have a lot more students that are going there. Um, that was a, a huge bump for us, about $300,000. Um, and pension um, is up over $100,000 again this year. So um, we definitely have, you know, even with people level funding their budgets, and we did reach out to all departments and ask them to do that. Um, even with level funds, as much as possible, we do have um, some big hits on uh, fixed costs. So it'll be, a, it'll be a fun season again. And don't we have three contracts to negotiate? <laughs> well, well, we, okay. <laughs> we can talk about that offline. It's not on the agenda. Okay. <laughs> All right. Gentlemen, you got anything further? No, I think, you know, after hearing what Julie had to say is that cuts may be the new level fund, you know, and um, unfortunately, so, but. Um, we'll figure it out when we get the picture, Dave. I, I mean, you, you're spot on last meeting. We need to know, we need to see the numbers and then get a feel of plugging in those numbers and where we end up and seeing what's left available. So um, it's tough. It's, um, yeah. you know, we got to control spending. And I think that for the most part, we've done a, a good job and 
we gotta we gotta figure out what we're gonna do moving forward with the available funds that we have for budgetary reasons. And I had that discussion, I think it was last year in the FinCom joint meeting with FinCom school committee and board of selectmen. Um, I think that opened a lot of people's eyes, but it's the truth, it's reality. It's, um, it's difficult from where we're at um, over the years, but um, we've always seemed to make it through and manage um, as long as we work together in getting to that goal. Um, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. So the one, the one thing I will say is we've established some pretty decent relationships throughout um, when it comes to this process and everybody's been very understanding about the needs and, and where money needs to be allocated to. So I just, I hope that that'll be continued in the future. Nothing else, gentlemen. Yeah, well said. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, I just have one thing. I just want to let you guys know. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so um, Larry Mulvey passed away and his mm. wife sent a nice letter. So I just want to let you guys know that it's here. I want to make sure everybody sees it. Um, she's thanking everybody for the lights that we, we put up this year and things that, around town. So I just want to let you guys know. Okay, we'll put the flags. Oh, he, it, it's, he, we had done that already. It's been a while. So, yep. but I just right. want to let you guys know. Gentlemen, uh, I, I didn't realize um, that was a situation um I, I thought i heard something about it but nobody's ever confirmed that on behalf of the board i would be more than happy to send some flowers to mrs Maldi's house on behalf of the board of selectmen very good okay anything else miss leonard that's all i have miss hebert good motion to adjourn so moved second all those in favor aye Good night, gentlemen. Good night, Good night. ladies. Good night.